podcasts are pandemic proof, according to Westwood One, who does a lot of research and runs uh, their broadcast group. They've recently, well, relatively recently, within the last six years or so, got into podcasting as well. Since COVID, over 90% of weekly listeners reported they listen to the same or more time uh, with podcasts. They spend more time. And the newcomers to podcasts say they are spending a lot more time. So people that started listening to podcasts within the last six months or so um, prior to the pandemic are now, they've picked up their listening pattern during the pandemic. Um, The group that is fastest growing is women, millennials. So I'll talk about that in a minute, why I think that is and how that applies to your podcast or if you're thinking about starting a podcast, how that would apply to you. Now, this report is basically, they they put out some really great data. They survey a ton of their listeners. Um, and, and when I worked in radio, this was a common thing. Uh, we would use these to kind of assess what the market was desiring and, and especially for advertisers kind of be able to provide some information on how radio works. So it's cool to see them doing the same thing with podcasting as well. So as far as the, the younger female podcast listeners, I think the reason for that is because when podcasting first started, it was almost all men that were dominating the podcast shows. There are a few women, but, you know, Joe Rogan, Duncan Trussell, all of those people that are, you know, not only men, but very macho, like, um, you know, speaking to like the man's man type men. Um, Obviously, there are plenty of women that listen to those podcasts, but it's nice to see and hear more podcast hosts that sound and look like you. So that is probably the reason why there's such a huge influx of young female listeners because there's a lot of uh, shows that are now hosted by young women uh, and women in general that are really great shows. So that's probably the reason why that demographic is catching up so rapidly. So if that's the key audience of your show, that's awesome. And actually within my own show, my most recent show, um, uh, something like 49% are identified as female, only like 29% are identified as male and the rest of them are unidentified. So it's interesting because I always thought the demographic for my show was men, uh, but that is not the case. And the top reason people tune in weekly for podcasts are to be entertained and to learn. So if you are able to hit both of those buckets or one or the other of those buckets, you're doing pretty well and you're in podcasting for the right reason. Um, Podcast listeners are willing to pay for some bonuses and extended episodes So that is also some great news if you're trying to monetize your show. If you uh, work with us, we talk, we we, will figure out different ways where you can monetize your show and make it profitable for yourself. And also people have become more tolerant of ads and and specifically podcast advertising is great, whether you're on the advertiser side or the listener side or the, the podcaster side, because the ads are almost always read by the host. And that is when I used to work in radio, that was gold host read uh, ads because you're getting the point of view of the host. You're usually getting ads that they're they're usually not willing to say something on air that doesn't align with what they believe and what they would share with you anyway. So um, podcast listeners are aware that that's how, you know, their favorite shows get made and that's how they make the quality of the shows better. Um, Only 9% of America listens to podcasts six plus hours a week. Now that's a lot of listening, first of all, but that's what they're considering heavy podcast listeners. And when you think about it, 9% is still a lot of people. Um, And 24% of America listen to podcasts on an average of one plus hours a week. So that's usually probably a few shows or shorter shows on their commutes. And there's a ton of data here, and I'll share this in the link below um, if you want to look at the specifics. But there are a couple specific pieces here that I thought were really interesting that I wanted to share. Um, And these are mostly about the podcast trends. Uh, As you can see, people are listening to podcasts more, but what's really, you know, obviously like, okay, well, people have always been listening to podcasts more. Has COVID actually affected that? Or has this year affected that? Um, And what I'm seeing in this data, looking through it a lot closer, is that COVID really hasn't affected podcasting that much. So like here, we can see the growth of heavy podcast listeners, people that listen six plus a week, have has kind of been a consistent trend, a slightly exponential, 2%, 2%, 2%, 3%. Um, and then the growth of um, medium podcast listeners has actually been shrinking. So the people that are casual listeners has kind of stayed the same. 
people that are kind of in the middle, most of them have become heavier listeners of podcasts, which is goes to show people that are into podcasts generally get more and more into podcasts as they find more shows that they like. Another piece of information that is really interesting is coming up down here. Where is it? Let me find it. Basically, what I want to look at is, well, here's this. This is helpful. The, re the top reasons why people tune in to be entertained, to hear interesting stories, and to just learn something new. So if you have a show that is uh, something like Joe Rogan, where people are learning something new, they're hearing interesting stories from the guests, and uh, you know he's a comedian, and he also has comedians on. He's hitting all three of those boxes, and a lot of, and also he's probably hitting the stay up to date on news and current events. Um, you know, so those those four pieces right there, if you're able to check all of those off, you're going to knock out a lot of people that are interested in things that are, um, you know, what your show's about. Only 17% listen to help them further their career only 33 percent listen to self-improvement which is what my show is about i'm trying to make my show more about stories uh that kind of fall back into self-improvement and inspiration but that's always interesting to look at um content trends this is interesting because almost all of these so this is over from july 2017 to july 2020 year by year how has the percentage of um, listeners listening to specific types of podcasts changed. There was a gradual increase in entertainment um, that has kind of leveled out. So on average, that's pretty much the same. The storytelling, those have been about the same. News and current events, there that's been about the same. The one in here that was interesting, none of these have really exploded in growth at all uh some the only one that has really changed significantly is music music has significantly and and consistently it's dropped almost 10 percent since july 2017 so shows about music uh, and also shows about sports those two have declined in popularity as far as shows go and like i said there's a lot of really interesting information in here this is interesting um, and helpful for podcasters or people that are interested in podcasting how do people discover podcasts? That's obviously super important. That's something we're always asking ourselves at Craig and Zana Media, and um, every podcaster should be asking themselves: How do people discover my show? How do people discover shows in general? And obviously, word of mouth is the best way. So that's why you'll see when we do contests or we recommend people do contests, it's always how do you get people to tell their friends about it? For a long time, when we were first starting our show, we had people screenshot. Uh, them sharing the podcast with a friend, whether that was on social media or in a direct message or an email, and that entered them to win like a $20 Amazon gift card. Social media also, um, and, and the interesting thing is social media is pretty much word of mouth also. Uh, and uh, I would imagine some of that is people discovering it through people's uh, podcast social media pages, but a lot of times I'm sure people are reporting that and they saw it on a friend's page from other podcasts. So that's interesting. 45% um, of people and 51% and of heavy podcast listeners uh, and old school podcast, 58% of old school podcast pioneers find their new podcast through other podcasts. So that's getting a guest, being a guest interview on another podcast that's bigger than yours or running ads on another podcast um, is clearly a very effective way of, of reaching new audiences because you're reaching people that already listen. And here, this is kind of showing you're reaching the people that are heavy podcast listeners, which is important. Um, you know, a decent amount of people just find their podcast through the podcast app that they use, but we're starting to get to kind of less significant statistical groups here on their favorite radio or TV program. That's pretty low ads on they heard on the radio pretty low magazine ads billboards those are all very low so really the social media and other people's podcasts that's opp <laughs> other people's podcasts that's the way that you reach new listeners as far as social media goes the most popular platform for people to follow a podcast host, which this is interesting. We found that people are more likely to follow the podcast host personal page than they are to follow the podcast page. And it almost makes you question whether having a podcast page separately 
is worth it unless at some point you want to step away from the podcast and you want that to have its own brand and be able to be bought or something like that. Um, so Instagram by far, which is no question and no surprise because Instagram is by far the most engaged um, platform in general. Facebook also is pretty popular. Twitter is surprisingly popular. Um, and a lot of people don't follow the hosts on social media or don't follow on social media at all. YouTube as well. Um, and that's interesting that TikTok, Snapchat, LinkedIn, those are all like pretty insignificant. So as a host, uh, pointing people to Instagram or Facebook or Twitter is probably the best way. And, and I always recommend just picking one and sticking with it. I don't always follow that advice myself, but if you say, okay, I'm going to be most active on Facebook, then be most active on Facebook and direct people to follow you and connect with you on Facebook when you're, when you're on your show talking about it. Um, and this is what, this is the, the last thing I want to talk about here is if, what are, what are podcast listeners willing to pay for? And a big part of that is bonus episodes. And I think that this data might be a little bit skewed because that's generally one of the most common things to upsell is bonus episodes or extended episodes. I find it really annoying when that happens, but I, I do see some podcasts doing that successfully behind the scenes content discounts on merchandise, live chats with hosts. So this is usually done through a Patreon or some sort. Um, people don't really care to pay for a transcript, it seems. Um, they do seem to somewhat, some people, about 25%, 23% in some way, are interested in access to the host, whether that's live chats or Q&As, Ask Me Anythings. Um, and the real thing that people are interested in is extra content. So longer episodes for people that are diehard fans or um, supplementary content. Um, platform trends. So as far as flat platform trends go, Spotify is gaining. Apple Podcasts is shrinking. YouTube has surpassed Apple Podcasts. I wonder if that will stay true after Joe Rogan moves to Spotify. Um, and, and Google Podcast is the fourth and, and but all have all of them have have grown in um, share of where people use these platforms. And the thing is, it seems like people are using more than one platform now. That's kind of what the data is pointing towards. Um, and then this goes into some advertising trends, which I will let you read the post if you are interested in that. So hopefully this helps a little bit break down and, and sort through some of this data because it's pretty heavy and there's a lot to it. But those are kind of the key takeaways is that women are consuming more and more podcasts. Podcasts are growing. People are listening to more podcasts. There's a bigger group of people that are identifying as heavy podcast users listening six plus hours a week. And there are some ideas there about what kind of bonus content they would like. And most importantly, how do people discover your podcast? And that is word of mouth, social media, and other people's podcasts.